Hi, I'm Arnie Gunderson from Fairruns. Today I wanted to spend a brief amount of time updating you about the condition of the fuel pools at Fukushima. You'll recall that in our last video I discussed the fact that the Nuclear Regulatory Commission was told by the NRC staff that there was no damage to the spent fuel pools at Fukushima. Well, I disagreed then and I disagree now. Just two days ago, TEPCO released a report that has a water analysis of the condition of the spent fuel pools at Fukushima. This data was taken in August, August 19th and 20th, so it's very current and I wanted to share it with you today. The table is a, um, is a water analysis and it says analysis of spent fuel pool water. The, um, let's go to unit two and then cross over to cesium-137. If you look at that column, it says 1.1 E8. Now, what does that mean? That's 1.1 with eight zeros behind it, or 110 million disintegrations per second in every liter of water. If you look at the next column over, that's cesium-134. It's also 1.1 E8. So the combination of both cesiums in the fuel pool on Unit 2 is 220 million disintegrations per second in a liter of water. So think of a liter Coke bottle, and inside it the water is disintegrating at 220,000 disintegrations every second. And that's just for Unit 2. The table also shows similar very high concentrations of cesium in Unit 1 and in Unit 3. It clearly shows that there's damage to the fuel in those three units. The interesting thing about the table is that it shows much lower concentrations of cesium in Unit 4. Now, it still could be that there's damage but less damage in Unit 4, or it could mean that contamination from the other three units fell into the water in Unit 4 and contaminated that water. So Unit 4 is a bit of a mystery, but Unit 1, 2, and 3 clearly have significant spent fuel damage. Well, the next thing I'd like to talk to you about briefly is that when we posted our video last, um, uh, last week, several people wrote in saying, where did you get the information about spent fuel being thrown a mile away? The information comes from the New York Times on, in an April 5th story. The April 5th story is based on a uh, Nuclear Regulatory Commission report that was confidential, but old-time visitors to the Fairwind site will remember that we posted it in early April as well. Well, the report clearly indicates that material was thrown over a mile away. Here's what the Times had to say. The NRC document also suggests that fragments or particles of nuclear fuel from the spent fuel pools were blown up to a mile away from the units and that pieces of highly radioactive material fell between the units and had to be bulldozed over, presumably to protect the workers on site. So in April, actually late March, a Nuclear Regulatory Commission report says the, the fuel pools were so damaged that they threw material a mile away. Yet in July, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission was told by the staff that that never happened, and in fact, the fuel pools are in great condition. Again, I disagree. I think the fuel pools are not in great condition. Now, to, to add to that, there's a new, a new picture up on the web by Kryptone, and it was just taken two days ago, and it shows Unit 3, and it shows it's incredibly high resolution. It shows damage, extensive damage, fuel pools on the right. Now, I'd invite our readers to um, go over it in detail and, and take a look and see what you can see. To me, it shows serious fuel pool damage, and um, I cannot understand how the NRC would, could, would think otherwise. Now finally, I need to correct something I said in the last video. In the last video, I talked about how salt water was introduced at Fukushima, came in contact with neutrons, and created sulfur. Now that part's right. 
In the last video, though, I said that the sodium in the salt water is what came in contact with neutrons and created sulfur. What really happened was it's the chlorine. Salt water is sodium chloride, and I, I misspoke and I said that the, uh, the sodium, not the chlorine, came in contact with the neutrons. I'd like to thank the, the watchers of this column who identified that. And uh, I don't use a teleprompter, and sometimes my, my mouth goes a little faster than my brain. Well, that's about it for today. We'll keep in touch after the hurricane. Thanks.